Welcome to section 3, SQL Injection and Cross-Site Scripting. I've chosen to put both of these two issues in the same section because the way they're exploited and the way that they're fixed is very similar, but we'll cover each separately. We'll start by looking at how SQL Injection works. Then we'll take a look at how template literals offer us a really clean way to avoid the risks of SQL Injection. Next, we'll take a look at how cross-site scripting works. And finally, we'll explore a few techniques for preventing cross-site scripting. Let's dive right in with SQL Injection in action. In this video, we'll cover how SQL Injection works. Then we'll look at how to perform a simple SQL Injection attack on our sample application. Just like the video on cross-site request forgery, this is about knowing what to guard against Please don't attack actual websites using these techniques. SQL is a text-based language for manipulating data. It mixes the data itself, such as the values we want to insert into the record, with the structure of the code, such as which table we're inserting into. This causes a problem when we want to dynamically insert data into an SQL table. The naive but unfortunately common approach is just to concatenate strings containing the structure and the data. The issue here is that the user can provide any value for body. So a malicious user might be able to create a query like this, even if their username that the system is providing is my name, they could override it with someone else and pretend to be a different person. And the reason this works is that the actual value of the body variable that was passed in is this bit here. By closing the quotes, they can escape the field they were supposed to be able to control and include other arbitrary SQL. Finally, they can ignore the rest of the query by simply making it a comment. This is actually pretty much what our database adapter looks like right now. It just blindly trusts the body value. Let's see if we can take advantage of this um, to pretend to be someone we're not. I'm still logged in as Forbes Lindsay here. But if I craft my message carefully, I can be, pretend to be someone called Bob, even though I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you what Bob's password is. As you can see, it looks like that message was posted by Bob, but in fact, it was posted by me, 